Hey everybody, welcome back to Boris Builds. I'm Boris. Today we're going to talk CNC. I've had my 3020 Pro Max V2 for about a month now. I've completed a few little projects with it and I think I'm ready to upgrade with the extension kit I bought. I've made a few pretty cool little, uh, I made this little Valentine's Day gift for my wife. She loved it. Um, I made it some coasters for my plants. I like to do bonsai pepper plants and stuff like that. Herb jars. These are actually pretty neat. I just let them grow up till they get about four leaves and then when the next set of leaves comes out I clip them and they pretty much stay this size and you get tiny little green peppers. <sighs> it's, it's pretty cool. I'll show an update once I get a pepper but I made a little a uh, coaster for that to sit on my windowsill. I also made this. I think I'm going to turn it into a fridge magnet. I don't know. I designed this and cut it out. Turned out really well. But anyways, I think I'm starting to outgrow it because I have some bigger projects in mind. So it's a good thing I got the Y-axis extension kit. We're going to open this up and see what that's all about. When I ordered my 3020 Pro Max, it's a V2, but it's the same kit for the Pro Max or the Pro Max V2. But when I ordered it from Genmitsu, they had a deal where the more you bundled, the bigger the discount you got. And they got me. I bought pretty much everything I could for that. I got the dust shoe. I got the extension kit. I got the uh, spoil board, the extra spoil board for the extension kit. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of lame that they make you buy the aluminum plate separate from the extension kit because what's the point of the extra travel if you can't put bigger material down i wish you didn't have to do that but you did anyways but in the end i think i got all of the accessories with bits and everything i needed for an extra for an extra hundred bucks so it it wasn't a terrible deal that's why it might be beneficial to look at Sane Smart's website to see if you can benefit from this as well. one-handed knifing so let's see what this is all about actually I gotta go upstairs That's my dog I don't know if you can hear him he requires assistance with something at the moment they always start barking right when you get the box open at least that's my experience anyways I'll be right back hey buddy what's up you just need some lovin's you gotta go outside? Let's go outside. Let's go outside. Come on, let's go outside. Outside. Come on. Avoid the garbage. And of course he's already barking to get back in. Anyways, he'll be out there for a little minute. He's got to pee and stuff. So it comes with a pretty substantial installation guide. Not sure how much is this is just extra languages and such. It looks like quite a fair amount. So this is going to be one heck of a process. It looks like it takes you through everything though the removal this is one of the better instruction manuals i've seen in a long time gives you a packing list uh optional accessories i bought everything but the laser there and because i got the v2 it came with the limit switches that even looks like the that's the v2 in the picture there actually because you can tell by the emergency stop and that the the box you can see the box mounted on the back, all that stuff. So it's funny that it says for the Pro Max, but the pictures in the book are for the Pro Max V2. 
Okay, so it looks like it's pretty comprehensive. It takes you through all the dismantling. I assume I'll have to dismantle my machine to get parts to reuse. So that's where we're gonna have to start, but we'll start with unboxing, I guess. Everything seems nicely packaged. We have new uh, rails. Not sure what this is. Maybe a track cover. Does it pop in there to hide the wiring? Probably. Okay, so we got frame extension, wiring extensions, new uh, screw, lead screw. That was one thing I kind of thought I had read. I thought I had read that this machine came with ball screws, but apparently I was wrong. I after I got it and realized it had lead screws, I went back and double checked everything. And it never said ball screws anywhere. I had been looking at lots of machines, and I think I may have gotten confused with the Fox Alien version, which does come with ball screws, which, looking back on it, I probably would have bought this that one over this one, because ball screws are better than lead screws. Lead screws can be difficult and lead to less accuracy. But I think on a machine this size, I don't know if it really matters. So we'll carry on with the unboxing and I don't know if I actually need to pull this out because I find if I pull things out I lose them. Everything looks well packaged, nothing looks bent or distorted. We got the rods, the rails, and the lead screw and the wiring extension in this box, as well as some hardware. And more Allen keys, yeah, more Allen keys, comes with everything. More leveling feet. Excellent. Oh, what else is in here? Zip ties, cable management, that's really nice. So this looks like a pretty good kit. Onwards and upwards, as they say. And now we're on to box number two. I struggle doing this with one hand. I gotta get one of those GoPro mounts for my camera or something mounted on my forehead. And it comes with more instructions. Now, I actually don't remember if they made me buy this separate or if it came with the extension kit, so I may have to do a little fact checking and update this, but that's a nice beefy aluminum plate, nice thick. All the holes seem fairly precise. I love the surface finish that they put on it. It's got all kinds of holes, tapped and otherwise. Yeah, very nice. And here we also have more hardware, more another Allen key, some brackets. Another plate, that's fairly substantial as well. Is that like a stiffening plate for the aluminum plate? I'm getting pretty excited here. And that's it. I'm hoping that the mounting blocks for the rails or in there, or I don't know, maybe I just use the... Okay, so I see what this is. This joins the two plates, and then what I do is I use the guide blocks and ball screw off of the original. 
Okay, so I guess the next step will be to start dismantling the machine I just got a month ago in order to upgrade it, which sounds like fun. Anyways, I'll go get the machine, we'll bring it in, we'll break it down, and then we'll put it back together. And hopefully, at the end of all of that, it will still work, because I would probably cry if it didn't. So one of the main reasons for getting this extension kit was for my aquarium hobby. I do want to build another one of these tanks because this one seems to be turning out fantastic. However, instead of using these 3D printed covers, I would like to just cut the grills directly into the acrylic. And I would like to be able to extend the size of that to fit a full sheet for a side wall, side partition. And maybe batch out some kits if there's interest in that. So if you would be interested in building your own all-in-one aquarium out of a simple 10 gallon aquarium, like I bought this aquarium for 20 bucks and with $10 worth of acrylic and a $30 pond pump, I feel this would be similar to something you'd spend two to 300 bucks on. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know. Also, if there's any other things that you like to cut with your 3020 Pro Max, drop that in the comments down below. I'd love to see it. And that would be amazing. Anyways, let's carry on. I went to go carry on and then I got distracted by my tank. I love these nano tanks because you can just get lost in them. There's little guys doing little things all over the place. Shrimps being shrimping, fish fishing. My snail's snailing around here, so there he is. My algae is just flowing. I gotta clean that. That's this weekend's project, cleaning up the hair algae. Although it does kind of look hypnotic the way it flows there. Realistically, if you just keep that under control, it's not hurting anything. And if you like it, you like it, right? It's kind of all over this thing, though. I gotta get this guy cleaned up. Justin Timberlake? Will you all Google here? Okay, Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake.
Okay, so I went to edit what I had already shot and I realized I had lost most of the reassembly footage. So you're gonna have to go without that. But um, first thing I'm doing is I'm doing a larger one of these to hold all the tools I need. I made more room for uh, stuff and things and stuff like that. But we're gonna see how this goes. Seems to be going fairly well so far. Um, very important to pay attention to the instructions when you're putting this together. I got myself backwards and had to take it all apart. Also, when you remove this uh, lead screw from the carriage underneath, it's spring-loaded and that will shoot out if you're not careful. So that happened to me and I wasted half a day looking for the darn spring which had rocketed off the wall and went God knows where. But as long as you pay attention to that, you should be fine. I'm gonna see how this goes. Okay, the tool tray is done. So this thing performed fairly well, uh, pretty much as it did before I modified it. However, I did notice a bit more, like when you, I was watching it when it would plunge, it you would see a little bit of deflection on these rails. It doesn't seem like much, but it could potentially be the difference between cutting in, cutting all the way through. It could mess up your Z depth, that type of thing. Um, I was using a down cut bit, so there may have been a bit more resistance when it was pressing down. Maybe my plunge was too much. I don't know. But that's one thing I noticed. These rails do have a bit of flex to them. Now, as for the new tool tray, how it turned out, it turned out very well. It's got added space for everything. I added for the little hold down clamps. I fixed the how the wrenches were held with this little dog bone shape here. And it's got room for everything I need. A bit more room for extra. I might have gone overboard with these 1 8 inch bits because these are all 1 8 inch bits. So stay tuned for a version three. I'm sure I'll add something to this. I might want to make a little pocket for an X-Acto blade because I find I use that a lot with the um, double-sided tape I've been using recently. But overall, this is a super handy system. I can move it up out of the way. And I was thinking about making other tool trays because this is kind of a workbench. I don't know, it looks like a mess right now, but this is portable. I can move this out of the way and use this as a workbench. So it'd be nice if I could put these tools away and have another tool set that I could bring up, say, for if I'm doing something else on this bench. Just uh, things I've been playing around with, ideas. I really like these. This little holder is super handy. It wasn't too expensive. Like, I want to say it was like 50, 60 bucks. And, you know, to augment your little workstation here with all the tools you need at hand, they're out of the way. They're off the bench, which is important because that frees up the space on the bench. And as you can see, all of my benches are ways to collect things. Um, it's just how I operate. It's not good. Part of the problem is I don't have space for everything and I'm pretty full up <laughs> anywhere I could put something. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna try and focus more on organizational projects and stuff like that for myself. And we will see how that goes. Anyways, overall, I really like this machine. The added range definitely helps. I will say there is some flex in this, but everything else seems rock solid. And I may have been pushing the machine a little farther than I should have been with the plunge and feed rates and stuff like that. But on to the next one. I think I'm going to build a cribbage board. I've been meaning to do one for a while and I really don't want to drill all the holes. So having something that will automatically drill all, what is it, like 400, 500 holes <laughs> is pretty much all the motivation I need to make one. Anyways, I hope this video was somewhat value added for you. I know I missed a lot on the reassembly process. Follow your instructions. Make sure you get this all back together properly. The orientation of the new and old plates and that black um, reinforcement plate that connects them is super critical. So follow the instructions for that. 
And be careful when you go to remove your Y-axis lead screw that you don't rocket the uh, spring-loaded uh, lead screw nut, the anti-backlash nut, because I lost a day looking for that, and that was very frustrating. I actually ordered replacements just in case it ever happened again, and I'll have them stashed in my spring drawer.